Welcome everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hey, you want to make a super chubby, overly fluffy, fun to make spine dangle or spine jewelry for your junk journal? Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Somebody was asking me recently about how to make a fluffy uh, spine dangle and here's a very easy way to do that. Um, and you can go as big and as fluffy as you like. And it's kind of akin to decorating a Christmas tree after you are done. So you can just put whatever you like on it. Uh, but basically this is removable. So it's just something to uh, add with our junk journals to give them a little extra pizzazz. It can be stored aside. The journal can be gone through as normal. And then if you're displaying the journal, say on a mantle or a coffee table, you could add your spine jewelry. I like to add mine with this little easy uh, bulldog clip on the top so they're very easy to take on and off. You can permanently affix them using uh, rings and all sorts of different kinds of mechanisms. But I'm just going to show you this very simple method. And then I'm going to show you how to decorate this little guy. Okay, so let's just take an up-close look. It's just made with some pretty uh, sparkly strings, some gourd pens with some beads, and random buttons. And um, I've got some other ideas too. I thought we'd uh, keep going with it, but I want to show you how to make one of these from scratch. So let's create a little room here Is as you know, there's no room on the craft table um, Okay, so here we go. Oh, yes sunshine. He is fine. He is dandy. Do we have anything to say? You do you have a couple things to say? Yes. Yes. I, I have a pup date. I'm coming in. I have a pup date everyone. Hello. I'm coming in here. Hello everybody. Well, yes, I was I am sleeping but can we just pretend I'm contemplating? Okay, I'm contemplating. Okay, my pup date. My pup date is, I had a bath this morning. No, no, it was a shower. That's right. Okay, this is, this is how it all went down. Um, um, we went to the dog park yesterday and I got dirty feet. Yeah, dirty feet. And um, mom said it was time for a shower. So dad jumped in and said, hey, I'll have a shower. I'll shower sunshine down and I'll hand them off to you, mom. And you can towel them dry and all that kind of stuff that happens after that dad really doesn't want to know about. So that's what happened. And now I am clean. Yes. Okay. I'm off to my bed again. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> okay, Sonny. There you go. Right back in position. He didn't, he didn't even move a muscle. He was just like, like, um. Uh, like bread dough, you like, like I don't know, like if you'd like pizza dough or something, like just like taking it over there and laying it back down. Okay, so let's get serious here and make a spine dangle for God's sakes. Now this, this is what it's all about. <laughs> okay, so if you don't have tons of laces and things like that that um, can make a very beautiful, very attractive spine dangle, but maybe, just maybe, you have a white bed sheet, and when you have a white bed sheet. You can go places. You can do things. You can create things. And one of the things we can create is a spine dangle. So what I did was I took a bed sheet and I tore it up into strips. And the nice thing about doing that is, I'm just going to tear a couple so you can get the, the gist of it, but to make it easy on yourself, when you get your bed sheet, it's obviously going to be sewn on all four sides, right? You want to cut those off first. Make them slim make a little cut and then tear and you get all of that off and then you're going to have these strips which are um, sewn. They have little um, uh, seam bind. They're, ed they're, they're the edges. Take all those off first. You can use these just like you would the regular um, torn strips but you can also, another tip, is uh, it will make your future tearing of your bed sheet much easier because you have, don't have to deal with all those little um, strips uh, all around the outside. Okay, so now pick an edge. It really doesn't matter at this point. So I am going to pick this lovely edge. Here we go. I think this is one I was working on. And what I did was I took a pair of scissors and I went on around, this was, I was eyeballing, but about every half inch or so, it can, you can do them uh, skinnier, fatter, doesn't matter, totally up to you. Just make about, I don't know, a bunch of cuts. And remember, if you can pick up um, a tool once it's it's more efficient and then get it done and then you can put it down and you're good for a bit as opposed to picking it up and doing it stopping and starting it doesn't really matter whatever whatever floats your boat and, and whatever you have fun doing okay there we go a little more light so now we're going to tear and this um, I think is a lot more fun than cutting fabric when you can just tear these big strips so I'm going to do that a bunch of times and then get all my strips torn first which I already have a bunch so I'll just um, 
do two more and then we will jump right in to making the spine dangle because it does happen pretty quickly. And what I did was I took a journal that I wanted to use my spine dangle on. Um, for example, I can't find it now. Um, here it is. It's the one I'm working on right now. And oh, by the way, these are also torn bed sheets on the front. I, I just thought that was kind of fun to do. Um, but uh, I decided, okay, how long should my spine dangle be? So <clears throat> I grabbed one of these very long bed sheet things and I said, to, I basically did a quick measure, like at least it wants to go up and down once, right? With maybe a little extra. So go um, up and down once, leaving a little bit extra. And then I measured that out on my, uh, my um, measuring mat. And it turned out to be about as, almost as long as my measuring mat. So I ended up just making these strips as long as my measuring mat, which is 22 inches. So I'd take that and I just trim that and I'd put that in the, the ready to go pile. I'd, I'd fold it so it's like this. And then I put it over here. Okay. And uh, let me back up a little so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, here I am. So I'm measuring. Then I'm cutting. And I like to cut on an angle cut. I think it gives you a nice finish on the bottom. Folding in half. Uh, putting over here in the pile. And then I just keep going until I get a whole bunch of those. So let's just create a bunch of these. And I, I counted how many were in my first one so you can get an idea of how thick it will be, but you can just keep adding until you're done. But this was officially um, 17 strips. Each of the strips was folded over twice. And then um, um, they were about a half an inch wide, I would say, on average. So that's going to give you one about that thick. And uh, you can add extra different kinds of... If you get a little oddball, just put it aside so you don't get it confused. Very important. Okay, so next, um, try and get the things out of the way that are not involved in the process at the moment. Okay. Um, and we just do a bunch of these. Okay. Okay. Whoop, now I've got some. Okay. No, quiet. Okay. Sorry, I hit my computer button. All right. And here we go. Folding. And another one. So let's see how many I have so far. Because I have done a bunch from before, which I don't know where they are now. Let me find them. Okay. Oh, okay. So we have one. I'm just going to drape them over my finger. One, a two, a three, four, five, six. Okay. Now I'm going to add some of these. These are from the, um, the Around the World of the bed sheet because they're going to give different texture. Seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, okay, twelve, okay, and then maybe I just want a few more, just a few more, okay, so I've got twelve, let me get seventeen so we have the exact same amount, all right, okay, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, cut it there, that's right, I think so. I don't know. Now I'm confused. Don't do that, Pam. Okay. One. <laughs> okay. That's 13. All right. Obviously, you could fold up your string and just cut it once, which would be the most efficient. 14. I guess I could. I don't know. Yep. Okay. 15, and I need two more. I think I can get enough out of one of these. Put the extra over here, move my book. 16, 17, okay, whoops, I lost count of 17. So you're gonna be the right length. There we go, little angle cut, and there we go. All right, so now we have all these I'm going to layer them all up together. No, nope. you're not part of the crowd. You go over there. You're going to go. Are you coming? No, I don't think you're part of the crowd. Okay, you go over there. All right, so now the best thing to do is do the feel test. Like you're going to see if it is the amount of chub that you are desiring. So I think that's a nice amount of chub. You can totally do it to whatever thickness you would like. 
Um, and there's a ways to thicken it up and thin it up. Um, thicken it up, you, obviously you can add more strings and you can add strings to strings. So that's another way to thicken it up. Uh, to thin it up, you can braid these. You can um, like uh, do different things like, like tie it here, then tie it down here, then tie it down here. So you can thin it up in different ways you can do that. But just to make a basic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, make sure everybody looks like they're sp about where they should be. Okay, sometimes some get longer than others and things get turned around, but it's okay. And then just take an extra piece that you had lying around. And uh, maybe I'll take this piece. It was a little shorty left over. And I'm just going to um, put him underneath and I'm going to tie a knot. And that's going to bring everybody together. Left over right, right over left. I'll give you a nice tight knot. Okay, so now we have something that looks like this. It looks like Cousin It, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we could have fun with that at Halloween. All right, so let's grab a a little bulldog clip and you can use any kind. Um, I have a bunch of these. I bought them in a pack and uh, I like the, the metal gun neutral color on it and I think it's going to work well. So I'm just going to roll this up and I'm going to use this to thread through the bull one of the holes in the bulldog clip. Let me take you a little closer. One side. Oops. And then I'm going to drop it and I'm going to pick it up again and I'm going to do it again. <laughs> okay, here we go. And I'm through. Okay, now I'm going to tie it. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do left over right, right over left. Gives me a nice tight um, knot. There we go. All right. And now um, you're going to kind of, you've pretty much got a, a good thing going here already. So that your little bulldog clip works like that. And then you just squeeze it and it can fit right onto the top of any journal. Now you're, it's going to look like this at that point. If you like that style, that's great. It just looks like beautiful um, fettuccine laying down the side. But uh, what I like to do, which you might see with regular tassel design, is um, I'm going to grab, I'm going to make a head on this. I'm going to make a very small head by squeezing it here. And I'm going to use an extra piece that I have lying around. This one will do just fine. And let me go a little closer for you. All right, so I'm just gonna go down maybe half an inch, not very far. Uh, you'd be surprised, it doesn't. you don't have to go down very far and you can kind of test it and see where it's at. And what it's going to do is going to create a ghost. <laughs> it is uh, going to push all these little strings. Let me back up so you can see. All these little strings down so it lays nice and nicely like that. Okay, so that was left over right and right over left. Locks that knot in well and then we just comb it like hair. Raking it with your fingers works well. Now another fun thing you can do I didn't mention but another fun tip is you can dye these bed sheets or you can use different colored bed sheets to begin with. So you can have a lot of fun out of one bed sheet um, or you can coffee dye them, you could stencil them, you could uh, rubber stamp them, you could do a lot of fun things with them. Uh, so they're just a, a launching pad, a beginning place. So we've got our basic construct already uh, created. So now all we're doing is decorating. I'm gonna try and reorient you a bit. Hopefully this will go well. Cross your fingers, cross your fingers. Okay. Okay, so I'm oops, looking at it from the side. Let me back up a bit. Okay, there we go. All right. We're looking at it from the side and it's easier to decorate this way I think if it's in front of you so you can so you can see what's going on you know what I mean it's just easier and uh, you can decide whether you want this not one to be in the front or you can hide it in the back totally up to you. Um, I like to put some kind of colorized band around there and you can use um, anything that you might have handy um, and I if you're going to make a bunch of spine dangles at once, sometimes it's nice to make neutral ones and that way you can add accent colors to them as you go, um, depending on what journals you're making. Or you could just make your spine dangles one at a time to match the journal that you're making. And um, I just thought the torn bed sheets go well with the torn bed sheet front on this one. So here I'm just going to use some, I think it's just some Christmas thread of some sort, some kind of embroidery floss. So I'm just going to, and it came on a little woo-ha like this. I don't know, there was no packaging. I probably got it at the thrift store. But I thought it was sort of pretty. So I'm just going to take a bunch of that off. And I'm going to give it a little snip. And then um, 
you can go around a thousand times or you can just take take this and start doubling and tripling it up. Okay, let's do that methodically here. I'm, I'm all the way, I'm as far away as I can possibly be. Okay, so then I'm, I'm gonna do it. Okay, that many times, I think that's good. Okay, so now I've got like this much, so I don't have to go around and around and around a thousand times, although you can if you want to. Um, and I'm just gonna tie this here because I think it's gonna look really pretty as a little neck to the head we made. I dropped one, so I'm gonna start over because that happens, yes it does. There's a lot of uh, restarting over because Fumble Fingler Sally here sometimes needs a few runs at things, you know what I mean? Okay, and one, okay, give it a nice tight. I think I dropped one too. Oh, well, we'll get it this time. Okay, and then we'll go left, oops, can't see. Left over right, shum, shum, anti. Okay, I got most of them. There you go. And now they can just hang down. And I could also um, cut these so they hang free. If I would have got them all in one fell swoop, that would only have been one cut necessary. But, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, there we go. All right. Very pretty, right? A little, a little decoration going on there. He's all dressed up, ready. It's going places. Yeah, things are happening. Okay, so now we can decorate the base of this little guy. Okay, so what I did, just for fun, I was just goofing. Um, where's the other one? Where's the one I made? Okay, let me show you. Oh, it, oh, it's under something heavy. Okay, hang on. Oh, okay. So this one, I just had some leftover uh, string. This is jewelry cording that I really need to use up because this thing takes up a lot of room in my drawer and it's just turning into a big knot. So that was the day I was going to use it. So I decided to corral this a little bit. I was just going to randomly tie some string onto different sections. Uh, no rhyme or reason, just all over on different strings. And I just thought it, it kind of it gave it a watery, I don't know, almost like a nautical look with like fishing line look to it. I don't know. Um, that's where I was going in my head. I don't know if I achieved it, but it was kind of fun. And uh, okay, so let's do something like that. But this time we seem to be working with a gold theme. Okay, what's going on here? So there we go. Something's not right. Okay, we'll put you over here. There you are. Okay, that's uh, better. All right, make sure everybody's organized. Okay, um, let us go ahead and just, I think I might work with the gold. I thought that was kind of, oh, that look the, we've got some other pretty colors in here. This green would be very nice. I think that would be very pretty. Oh, then the copper, that would be cool too. Should, well, maybe we should just stick with the gold. Okay, I'm gonna stick with the gold. Okay, I'm gonna stick with this one because then it'll be more uniform. So I'm just gonna maybe cut off, oh, I don't know, maybe a foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet. Okay, something like that. And then maybe cut this into um, maybe like five inch, four inch, five inch little pieces, just enough so that I can tie it in a knot and I have a little dangle. Uh, these can be, you can trim them short or you can leave extra long dangles. This one, I left extra long dangles. Maybe this one I will trim short. I want to see what it looks like. So let's just give it a go and see where this takes us. Okay. And you don't have to do every single, let me move this back so you can see the whole thing. You don't have to do every si single um, strand of this, but just a random one here and there. Could be at different heights. Okay. One here, left over right, right over left, if you're gonna remember it. If not, it's probably still gonna stay. Okay, so we got that. And let me do this one here. There. Now this is where I feel like I'm decorating a Christmas tree because this is where you come in and you just put pretty stuff on it. Yeah, and you can, you can hang things from this stuff, uh, from the dangles, or you could um, just let them flow free or you could um, trim them short, as I said. So we'll, tr we'll see what, where this one takes us. So this I'm calling garland. And it's not even Christmas time, but so I just, I feel like there's something Christmassy about it. Now you could do these totally neutral too. That would be very pretty, like no glitz or glam, but just, you know, um, soft neutrals, um, things like that would look very pretty. And, um, there's really no right or wrong way to do a spine dangle other than you just kind of follow your your uh, imagination. And um, 
uh, I encourage you to try new things, try, try different ways of approaching a spine day. Go maybe do something you haven't done before. You know, don't write it all off and, uh, um, uh, until you give it a go because you might think it's not fun or you might think it's ugly but until you're done. A lot of times you never know. And I guess in this case, I would say, if you don't like it, it's only fabric. It's only a torn bed sheet. The world will carry on. There are bigger fish to fry. That's right. So we just do a bunch of these. So this does not use up a lot of supply, but I think it's very rewarding and it adds a nice element to the junk journal that um, is unusual. It's different than a regular book and junk journals are different than regular books. So I think that can be a, a celebrated thing. I'm going to maybe put a few more of these in here and uh, maybe three more. Good way to use this up. Okay. Put some higher here. Maybe a different string. An unknown string. And you can decorate the back as well. Um, it's not 100% necessary if it's going to sit in the same position most of the time, but you can if you want for completeness. And um, let's see, maybe you, huh? Okay. Yeah, we'll get one on you. Here you go. Don't no, don't. You're not being ignored. No, now you're an octopus. Now you look like an octopus to me. Did anybody think octopus? Were you saying no, no, not spy, it's a ghost? It's an octopus. Can't you see that? It's, it's, ab it's obviously an octopus. Probably. <laughs> I can totally see that now. It's a very um, thready, uh, leggy octopus. Okay, he's got a few more than eight legs. That's for sure. Okay. Did you guys see the, sh the show about the octopus? The guy who kept going out to visit the octopus for like, I don't know, years. It was amazing. Um, uh, my teacher, the octopus or something like that. It was a, it was a good, uh, good show. Um, if you want to forget everything that's going on in the world? Go watch the octopus story. There you go. Okay. Um, so we have that. And I, I would call that the garland base. And uh, so next, what I did was I made these fun little um, collections of beads on uh, garment pins or gourd pins or um, oh, there's like 17 pair pins. You, you name those things, whatever you want. Um, okay, and I just have like a multicolor batch of these things. I think they came in a big bag, but they're really handy if you just want to easily add something. And I have a, a nice um, tray of beads over here. So I'm just going to kind of randomly grab, I could put my glasses on for this, this is serious. Okay, maybe we're going to zoom in here so I can see what's going on. Oh, there we go. Is that too close? Okay, back up. Sorry. Yep, there. So uh, I'm going to grab some beads. Okay. One. Um, oops. Microscopic, tiny little, and if, and if you uh, ow. if uh, you don't want to work with beads, you can you can put material on these too. Maybe we'll make a few of those, just so I can show you what that's like, because that's kind of fun. Because uh, you know the beadwork is uh, as we're getting older, it's a little trickier. But you know if you got good eyes, or or some really good readers, you're 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 okay. Yeah, you can carry on with the beading. I used to do a lot of beading. I used to really enjoy it. I still do enjoy it. I find it very um, relaxing to do, um, except for the frustrating part of I can't see the way I used to be able to see. So, and then I would just pick a random spot and 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 just uh, stick it on there. And you can hang it right side up or upside down. You can dangle it off the side of one of these things. You can pin it right to the thing. But I just think that 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 just gives it a really pretty little element. Okay. All right. Uh, Get a little bit here and get more light on the subject. Okay, one more light. One more light. What are you doing? You're not on. Okay, there you go. Okay, so let's do a couple more of these so you can get the idea there. Um, garment pin and any, any color will do. This is a little black one. And I have glue all over my fingers because yes, we're going to be gluing because I was gluing. Um, okay, so there's one of those, and it's it's nice. It's, it's instant summer. Yeah, we completely skipped spring. We're at ninety. De we're at ninety degrees here in Florida now. I know, right? When did that happen? I think I'm so far away. Is that better? Okay, and um, yeah, ninety degrees over the weekend here. Can you believe it? Yeah, I know. Um, 
I mean, it's nice to be warm, but you know, there's 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 nice warm, and then there's like, holy moly, who turned on the oven warm? You know? Whoops, sorry. Yep. Okay. There we go. Get in the screen, Pam. Get in the screen. Okay. Here we go. Now we're popping that little baby up. And you could do a hundred of these or just a couple, you know, whatever, whatever you like. So maybe we'll do, we'll do three total. Okay, let me place this on here somewhere. Okay, let me put you here. And it's okay if your um, spine dangle dangles longer than your book. Um, that's okay. Yeah. Yep, oh, back up. And you can always trim them to whatever length you want. So just kind of know that as well. So... Um, okay, we've got two on. I think I might like to put one more on. And then we are going to go back to, or well, we're going to go to the next step and next tip and trick with uh, this kind of a spine dangle. An extra chubby. All right. Put you on there. And you can dangle things from these. They could have strings that come from these. Maybe we'll actually do that. That might be fun. All right, let me do that. So we can have like extra fun here. Okay, so we have that. And then um, there. Now you could uh, you could just take the gold. Let me close this one up. Did I show you any of that? I hope I did. Um, okay, there's that little guy. And then you could take one of these. You could take more of this. Or maybe we want to do something different. Maybe we're going to use up some of this. This matter. Okay, let me back up a little. Okay, I've got some of this string. Maybe I will pull out the, the green now. Maybe it's time you need to come forward. The green, what is that? Oh, um, okay. Or the, maybe the copper? The copper might be pretty. Maybe we'll try copper. All right, so maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut maybe a few of these. Maybe I'll cut three since I have three of those little things hanging. And uh, now there's a couple of different ways that you can get this to hang. You can tie a knot, but it's going to make your little arms stick out a bit. Uh, so the way not to, to, so that doesn't happen is you do the, you do the loop. Okay, this, hopefully this works in theory, or it works in my mind. Oh, you're too far away. Hang on. Boop. Okay. All right. So I, I made a loop. Okay. I'm going through. It's just like we were making a journal tag where you pull the feet. You grab the loop, you make the loop big, you go back and you grab the feet. Now, if you're lucky, you can put this in the middle here somehow. So now they dangle down. See that? You got like a little extra hoo-ha hanging off the side. That's kind of cool. All right, so let's carry on. We'll try that again. Make a loop. Okay. And, uh, We've got this, all right? We're just gonna put it in there, through there. Bring the loop through, stretch it out. Like you're trying to get through a really thick sweater, get the, get the head, sweater neck over your head and can't fi quite figure out why your head got so big. And then um, you're gonna pull that through and you're gonna have two cute little legs. Did I do that right? I think I'm stuck on a bead, but I think it's okay. Yeah, I think it still worked. Oh, can you see? There we go. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. So they've got some hanging there. And we should have one more. This is one, two, one, two. Did I not do three? Did I like bail after two? Did that happen? Huh. That could have happened. All right. That's possible. We'll do one. Oh, no. You know what? I made the third one, but I just didn't put it on yet. That's silly me. Okay. Here we go. Let's put you on about here. Okay. And I think they, they contrast nice against the white. It's a, uh, it does, it does kind of look like a Christmas tree a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get more light on the subject here. I've got tons of light. It's just all shining at me instead of on the project, which is really, we need to see the project. Okay. Here we go. All right. So let's get one more of those. Here we go. Now you could double these up too. You could get a couple of strings. You could use embroidery floss. It would be a lot of fun. You could just have tons of fun. Okay. We're going through underneath. Stretch the loop open. Get your little fingers in there. Grab the feet. Pull. And then put your little beads all back down where they should put supposed to be. There we go. We got a dangle with an extra little string. Okay, so now we have that. 
So the next piece of the pie, or the puzzle, is, let me back out a little bit, Yep. Um, I put some buttons on here. Now you can painstakingly slow stitch all of these, or you can just grab your Fabrifix glue and glue them on. So I did, uh, uh, here's a button that I decorated. Um, days gone by, or you could just put plain buttons on. I think they look really cool too. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, here we go. Oh, let me show you my, my button collection. Here's my button collection. So I'm just grabbing random buttons and you can color theme them. You can color coordinate. Uh, but I think, um, I want to use, um, neutrals and browns and whites and different sizes and, um, creams, old ones, old uh, Victorian buttons, maybe a black button, just kind of this palette, this, this kind of tone. Um, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just, you know, whatever you feel like doing. Yeah, there we go. All right, let me get, here's my Scotch Creek. No, this is not my Scotch Creek glue stick. This is a Fabrifix. If you're looking for a good, fa okay, clear silicone glue. It glues fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, and paper to paper very well, very quickly. And um, so I'm just going to take a button. And I'm going to take the flat side of the button, and I'm going to put some glue on it. Yeah. I know, complicated, huh? Well, I already got my fingers stuck in the glue. That's why you're seeing all the glue on my fingers, because this is what I was doing. So now I'm just kind of looking where would be a nice spot for this. And I'm thinking, hmm, so maybe these things that I decorated... These little arms or, or octopus legs that have um, stuff on them. I'm just going to keep going and decorating those. You don't have to decorate every leg. You can just decorate some of the legs and uh, go with that. And you can put a whole bunch on one leg. It's kind of fun. Once you get started, honestly, it's hard to stop. One thing I would recommend is that you find the flat side of your button, flatten ish as flat as you can find it. And you just glue your button on the thing and you are pretty much done. Once that dries, that's going to be pretty strong on there. So um, it's kind of neat. Good old Fabrifix. And you can use Fabri-Tac or Beacon 3-in-1 glue or any, you know, depending on what country you're from, you might have different fabric glues there. Uh, but you're looking for a clear silicone glue. Um, I just know this brand has a particularly good grab. It's a, here's a glass button from Victorian times. Um, uh, it has a good, strong grab. It's pretty fast. It's very strong. And we can carry on and keep having fun. That's what we like. Okay. It's like, you know, watching glue dry is about as fun as watching paint dry. So we want to get, we want to get moving. <laughs> Here's another little flat side of a button. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do with a junk journal. It's not just always about the book itself. Sometimes we want to decorate the book. We want to have some fun with sashes or um, um, closures, uh, page trims. Well, I guess that's kind of about the book. But you, you know what I'm saying is that there's a lot of things that you can do because once you break the rules of engagement, when you jump off the platform and say, hey... I don't have, this is not necessarily like a regular book. There's something different about this um, process of junk journaling that I can do anything and it's a go. You know, I don't need to ask permission. I don't need to, you know, see if it's okay with Sally down the street. I can just do it. Yeah, I can just do it. I can just go in there and do it. And uh, they can, I can ask questions later, you know, like, did I like it? Did I like the way my, my, crazy idea came out or you know if I did and I could say okay well next time well, how would I do it differently um, or what could I try I haven't tried or I, or I would really love to try this because that just seems so exciting um, or hmm I don't think I can do that because I don't have the stuff but then I might say to myself hey but I do have this and it, maybe I could incorporate what I have because I'm a crafter and I, I'm very creative and inventive with my resources because not everybody has the same stuff, right? So we get ideas from each other. And this, this reminds me of a fisherman's net now with catching little things. These are all maybe the little bobby thing. I don't know what those things are called, but um, the, the little things and, you know, like catching stuff. Um, does anybody else see that? I kind of see that. Oh, I have a blue glued blob coming off here. We will use you. So as you can see, you can just keep going and going. And it's very um, 
fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't know how to say it, but it's just a, it is a lot of fun to do this. Very ther therapeutic. Um, maybe you have little flat back pearls. You can put those on there too. That's a nice thing. Uh, why? You can. It's, you, you got stuff? Use it. Yeah. I mean, no more holding on to the pretties. You just get there and you, you pull out your pretties and you use them because that's why you bought them was to use them. And uh, so sometimes we all need a little nudge. You know what I mean? You just get those pretties out and you use them. All right. I'm looking. Oh, I need to look at my button door. I'm looking at my bead door trying to find some buttons. Okay. Here's a few more. I'm just going to load this guy up. But it's, it's, it's just really fun to do. Again, um, you got to find the things that are fun to do in life and do more of them. Okay, we're going to put something up there. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, and uh, when you don't know what's fun, then you got you got a lot of fun because you get to try everything. Yeah, there you go. Um, nothing's off your table. Mm -mm. Okay, it's a cute little button. All right. My little black one, maybe. Black's always a nice grounding accent. It's always like you can add a little black, little tiny touches here and there on any project, and it looks nice. It's just a little, uh, yeah, grounding element. Very fun. And here we go. Here we go. So it was nice to hear from Sonny this morning, yes. He uh, was a very, very good boy at Woda's Bath, yes. I'm not his favorite thing, but he tolerated it like a champ. Let me tell you, he was something. Um, okay, so I think that's a lot of fun. So you can see here's two different styles using the same concept. And um, very easy, very fluffy um, spine dangles. Uh, they really have no purpose other than <laughs> decor, unless you want to use them as a mop or something like that afterwards. You can totally do that. Um, but they just add something kind of special when you're, you're, you know, presenting your journal and it has a little extra something. Now I might go ahead and trim some of these down. I might not leave it that long. I might bring it down to maybe about there. And, um, but I'll decide that when I'm done, I'm, I'm probably going to keep working on this little guy. But I just wanted to show you that so you had some ideas and fun. And who can, you know, who has more fun with a bed sheet than a, than a crafter? <laughs> Nobody I know. So I hope you had fun. Thanks for joining me. And we carry on into the future, into 2022 together. Um, for uh, everybody who's been here, thank you so very much. And for everybody who's new, welcome aboard. Let's have some fun together. I'm thrilled everybody is here. Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts uh, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. They cover life of a crafter, junk journals, paper crafting, answering your crafty questions. Um, I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. Hey, if you haven't signed up for that yet, oh, guess what? I'm going to add something new, new to the free monthly emailed newsletter. Not only do you get a free digital image emailed to you every month that you can print out and download. It's on one sheet. It has multiple sizes and you can use it in your artwork any way you like. You get a junk journal tip, updates from me, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker explaining what a junk journal is in Word document and PDF format. And you can change the font or the wording or just use it as is to tuck in the front of your junk journal or anywhere else that you like and um, to help explain what a junk journal is and how to use it. And I'm also going to add that list of page ideas that we were working on in the, um, oops, these page ideas that I was working on in the uh, how to make a junk journal out of an old book. A lot of you asked, could I post that somewhere? And uh, so I'm going to add that to the junk, um, the free emailed newsletter. So all you need to do is sign up for the free emailed newsletter. And on every one of those, it will be near the bottom in the section of all those extra goodies that you get. And um, yeah, and uh, I've had a lot of interest in that uh, experience. So we barely, I mean, we really barely scratched the surface of this list. I think we got down to a route here somewhere, but there's a lot more on the list. Plus there's a lot of other things in my head that are not even on the list. But um, I might do a little mini series of taking one concept and morphing it so it can show up multiple different ways in your journal. Um, let's say if you have a four signature journal, four different ways to do that and just carry on with the different concepts. So you can kind of see how uh, you can take one idea and um, use it throughout your book, but it can look differently. It can, it can present differently. So it doesn't look like the same thing all the time. Uh, Cause often I, uh, one of the biggest concerns is people feel like I, I don't know what to do. I have all these naked blank pages and they're just staring at me and I don't even know where to begin. This is an excellent place to begin. You take one idea and you just, um, put it through all your journals and then you take the next idea, put it through all your journals, but you make them a little bit differently when each one from the next. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That will be coming. And, um, 
I, oh, there's so many things going on. Oh, I have an Amazon shop and I've added four sections now. There's my favorite tools and supplies. There is, um, as I sit here and pick the glue off my fingers, um, there's um, books that a junk journaler might find of interest. So if you're looking for pretty pictures of uh, birds or Victorian things, I, I'm starting a collection of books in there. At least it's a great place for you to see the cover, see the publisher, um, see all that data that you need, and you can either purchase it there on Amazon. Sometimes they have new and used versions. Sometimes these sell out, but they have links to other places where you can buy them. Um, or, But also remember that good places to buy them are um, the online bookstores or um, even better if you can find them in your thrift stores or in your um, garage sales. They'll probably be the least expensive there. And what else? Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Uh, oh, I also have a uh, craft storage uh, section. So if you're looking for cutie ideas and different ways to store your crafts or your embellishments or your uh, ephemera or your bits and bobs, um, that's a great place to start and get ideas. And then also, um, oh, I just, I don't, can I show this? I don't know. I got to swing my camera all the way around. Um, Oh, I'll probably click off. I won't, I won't do it. <laughs> I'm going to accidentally hit the button. Uh, but basically, I, I, I uh, have one of those little three-tiered carts and uh, beside me now to keep all my essentials. Let me just take it out and see if I can do it. Okay, cross fingers. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Here, this one of these little three-tiered carts. Excuse the dog food on the floor. Um, and it's just really, really handy to hold all the things I use all the time, like, like it's my crocodile, my tape, my glues, uh, my rulers. The things that I grab all the time are on here. Very handy. So if you're looking for stuff like that, that's a good place to start. And um, what else? Oh, this is another sen section for Sunny. Uh, favorite pet supplies of uh, my little sunshine, the Maltese pup. And uh, what else? I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find occasional journals when they are complete and ready to go. Uh, sometimes journal bundles or journal collections when they're complete and ready to go. Um, you're going to find my vintage digi kits, which are printable downloads. They're printables that you print out at home. Uh, you're basically uh, purchasing a computer file that you, you can sit, download and save on your computer at home and then print it out as well. And they're in collections of um, five pages, all sorts of different images, but they're done by theme. So if you're looking for birds or Victorian or celestial or, um, you know, wallpaper or whatever it is, um, I think I have um, up around 100, pretty close to 150 now, different themes that you can pick from. And they're all on JPEG images and uh, they're high res pictures. And also, um, what else do I got? Oh, fundals, holy mackerel. I've been <laughs> I've been making fundals for the last three days. Um, uh, fundals are collections of old paper, old ledgers, uh, like old general store ledgers and things like that. Um, postcards, receipts that are vintage or antique. A lot of very interesting old um, book pages, magazine pages, hand dyed paper that I make, and all, a plethora of other things that I put in there. You get a hundred pieces in a pack and it's a really great place to start if you, you just want to delve into um, feeling the old papers and reading the old history and stuff like that and adding little, little interesting things to your junk journals here and there. It's, it's a fun thing. And just a little side note, that's um, some, I don't know if you know, but uh, the original fundal idea came, became uh, from myself when I wanted to sit down and make a journal and I had all this stuff, but I had to stop get up and go pull out one sheet and one thing from all these many different places. And it took quite a while to collect them all into one collection. Um, and uh, I think the slowest way to do it was don't even collect them. You just go and get the individual pieces as you're making the page. And, and it can make your, you know, make a junk journal take a hundred years to make. Uh, but if you have a collection of stuff that you can draw from, that there's a lot of variety in one thing, a uh, one package, um, which I originally created for myself. This is what I did. And I made a whole bunch of those for myself. And I thought, well, gee, I wonder if other people would be interested in having something like this. So that's how the fundal was originally born. And um, let's see, I think it's a process that a lot of people who make junk journals probably do. They, they just go around and collect a bunch of stuff, sit down and then create with the stuff that's on their desk. It's not novel, but it's uh, it, it's a very handy. It really does uh, expedite the process when it's in, within arm's reach. And also, um, what else is in that old Etsy shop? 
Well, I can't think of it, but you know, if you ever stop by. Sometimes I do do a lot of fanfare, a video, and, and social media splash about something that I might have for sale. Sometimes I just slip things in there unannounced and just a surprise to you. So if you uh, favorite my shop, you'll get a little notification when I upload something new. Um, but you never know. Just come on and uh, stop by the shop. You might find something um, in there, and uh, it might just be waiting for you to come by. And uh, what else is going to Oh. If you find value or had fun here, please like some, and subscribe and share this video. And uh, I also have a little merchandise shop. So if you're interested in uh, zipped hoodies or sweatshirts or t-shirts or mugs or totes or fun things like that that say Create with Reckless Abandon or the paper outpost on it, um, you can purchase that as well. All the links for everything are down below the description, in the description box below these videos. And if you're on your phone, just touch the title of the video and it should pop open the description box so you can see all of that. And uh, most of all, remember that fun can be simple. Or it can be chunky and fluffy and hairy and look like an octopus. So create with reckless abandon, everybody. Have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.